in my other Inktense video, I talked about how I think the Inktense products might have an India ink base since they retain their translucency over layers and they're indelible once dry. I pulled out some of my colored um, India inks. These are the PH Martins Bombay. Pit pins are also India ink based. Um, I may grab some of those later on, but I, ooh, I thought it would be really cool to do a bit of a comparison, especially color wise, because some of these colors are just really similar to what I've noticed I've gotten with colored India inks. So if you guys are curious, this is not gonna definitively prove anything since there is no information about what these are actually made of on the MSDS, but it's fun to play around and maybe draw some conclusions. So if that sounds good, keep watching. So I grabbed those pit pens we were talking about and I think we can go ahead and get started. So I have a cup of clean water. I've got my Derwent Intense pencils. I've got my Derwent Intense blocks. I've got my Bombay India inks and I've got pit pens. And I, as you can tell, do not use India ink very often. There's nothing particularly wrong with it, I just don't use it. I think because it's probably not always, sometimes I'll get smearing if I use it with water-based media. And I'll usually get smearing if I use it with alcohol-based media. So we've got the Bombay Brown. It's really old, it's probably evaporated, so. Might be some fallout. Inks can go bad. That gives you kind of an idea of the color. Then we've got tangerine. And I feel like tangerine is really close in color to the Derwent, either tangerine or orange, I'd have to check. Let's see, yeah, tangerine. So we know for a fact these are India ink based. And these are going to be indelible once they're dry, but you can do sort of ink wash and blended effects with them until then. And depending on how much water you use and what kind of paper you use and what, you know, the temperature and weather are like outside that day, you can, a lot of, some watercolors will use them as their watercolor basically because they like those, the ability to layer without it getting too muddy. And these are really nice, bright, vibrant colors. I don't have more of them because I don't use them enough to really justify owning a large collection of them. The stopper has kind of gunked up forever on that one. So that is brown, red, and tangerine. And I'll give those a chance to dry. So I don't have a one-to-one -one match with the pit pens because they're made by a completely different manufacturer from the Derwent and from the PH Martins, but I did try to color match. So we have dark sepia here. And as long as this is still wet, which can be tricky because we're not actually putting a lot of liquid into the paper, you can blend it out. Actually, I did a really good job matching that one. And what's nice is that with the India inks, they shouldn't separate out the way dye base inks will. This is orange glaze. And we also know for a fact that pit pins are India ink based. This is pale geran geranium lake. Which is not quite as cool as the Bombay Red. And it's a little uh, cooler than the Derwent. Then we've got Cobalt Green, which is kind of similar to the Teal. 
And then finally May Green, which is kind of similar to the Leaf Green. And as of right now, I don't know how India ink pigments are, like if they differ from watercolor pigments, I don't know whether or not the India ink refers to the type of shellac that's used because there's two types of, of India ink. There's waterproof and then there's non-waterproof and wa non-waterproof doesn't have the shellac and you can use it with alcohol markers because alcohol markers are solvent, like um, an alcohol solvent will dissolve lacquers. So there's like a lot of variables and I understand that like color similarity is not really an accurate way to gauge whether or not a product is similar or a product is made from the same materials. And I'm having a difficult time kind of articulating, that's bark, why I think, well, I mean, I think they're India ink because they are translucent and once they've dried, they're non-water reactive, so they're stable. Those are properties of India ink. Ooh, that's still wet from earlier today. But also just sort of the way the colors lay on the paper and reflect light and things that are a little hard to kind of demonstrate on a camera all right, so I'm gonna do, I think, red and, ooh. So I've been using them like they're, like they're paints for some of my demonstrations, and I think I need to work with less water because they get goopy. And that is my mistake. So I'm gonna do, try to do both red and fuchsia. Actually, the red is very close to Pale Geranium Lake. Oh, come on. So yeah, I think if you mix the two, you'd get that red. But sometimes art supply companies don't officially provide us with all the information we really need to understand the products or to understand the scope of what we can do with the products. So we have to do kind of our own testing and use our experience and our education and our other similar materials to do a best guess. So that's what I'm kind of trying to do here. But like, for example, this tangerine orange, right? It feels very flat to me as an orange. And the red feels kind of flat too. And I don't know if it's how the pigments are reflecting on the paper and it might be due to the base, like what they're using as a binder what they're using as um, their pigments, but it's just not as light reflective as a lot of the watercolors I use. And I'm noticing this is consistent between the Pit Pens, the Bombay India inks, and the Inktense pencils. And not that that's a, you know, that's not a detriment. That's not um, an area where the product is lacking. It's just a comment. And here's the Intense Pencil. I'm not going to do them for every single one. Oh, I have a lot of blue still in there. Like, they, they do pack a lot of color punch. You get a lot of color out of them, but some of the scintillation that you would get from watercolors is just kind of missing. And I think it's because they're all India ink based. which again, doesn't make them any less of a product and it doesn't make them less useful as a product. It's just something to consider as um, a painter or an illustrator, you know, how you want to use these, when you want to use these. There's a little bit of like deadness, I guess, to whatever they're using in, in these. But I think if they are India ink based, that's probably what it is. Is they're not reflecting light quite as much as watercolors with other types of binders would. Like Core, for example, is really well known for its bright, vibrant, true colors. And that's because they use Aquazol and Aquazol is clear as opposed to gum Arabic, which is kind of a yellow color. So, 
I'm going to let these dry and then we're gonna talk about them a little bit more. This has had a chance to dry. Remove the excess smuts. And hopefully you guys can kind of see what I mean about these colors feeling just kind of dead. Um, I don't really know of any other way to put it. So I'm gonna do a opacity test. They're all supposed to be translucent. They don't necessarily all feel translucent. And I'm just gonna do mass tone testing. So we've got four things we're testing. The Bombay, the Pit Pens, the Inktense Pencils, and the Inktense Blocks. And I did a opacity test for the Inktense Blocks already on the Unbox and Swatch, but I just wanna have everything here in one place where we can kind of see things easily. So we're going to begin with the Bombay inks. And I'm pretty much gonna do what I did last time. So I have a full strength spot and then underneath I have a mass tone. Next we're doing this with the pit pens and I'm wondering if they're actually kind of interfering with the pigment based ink I put down. And I wonder if by pigment based ink, Pintel really means India ink. See, I'm getting a little bit of smearing and part of that is because we're using you know, a fairly dry brush. It's certainly not as wet as say, just putting watercolor down on the paper or putting ink down on the paper. We're using a fairly dry brush to uh, kind of smear our, our ink on, right? So that could also be disturbing some of the particles in the pigment ink. I'm gonna do a little bit of blending with these might go back to the India inks and do that as well with, I mean, yeah, those India inks up there and do that as well since we have a little extra room. Some are a little more reactive than others. And with the amount I put down for the India ink, that's gonna take a while to dry. All right, next, we are going to do the ink tents pencils. And I'll try to do them kind of in chromatic order. All right, so we've got our dry swatch and now we have our wet swatch. And then finally, we're going to do our intense blocks. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do a dry swatch and a wet swatch. So this has had a chance to dry. Just move everything off to the side. And I'm gonna have a scan of this available. But as you guys can see, they're all kind of lacking the nuance that you would get with watercolor. It's very flat, one-dimensional color. And that's something I think spans across all of the India inks as watercolor inks sort of products. So if you're not quite seeing it, fear not, I'm gonna scan it have it available for you guys so you can look at it up and up, blah, nice up close and personal. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, playing with art supplies and helping me 
kind of come a little bit closer to cracking the riddle of the Inktense ink blocks and Inktense color pencils. If you're looking for more watercolor videos, stick around. I've got loads of tips, tricks, tutorials, and reviews here on this channel. Once you've exhausted that, you can head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com to check out my watercolor basic series. I've got step-by-step -step tutorials to teach you guys how to do watercolor illustrations and watercolor comics. And if you like watercolor comics, you should check out my web comic, 7-Inch Kara, over at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful, useful, and informative. And if you guys have any official information about what intense products are made out of, let me know. I've already got links in the description below to what I've found. So thank you guys so much for watching. Bye guys.